interest out there in TV land about my desk and air dryer. And I would know that Chris Hemsworth would want me to give you an update as well as answer some of those questions. As you can see here, all of the desk and beads have turned pink, so it's time to change it out. Here's a shot Bernoulli had taken when it was about half saturated, and you can see that the top layers of the desk and became saturated first. Since I last loaded in fresh beads, I've done about 5 hours, if not more, of continuous sandblasting, as well as about 10 days worth of light use with air tools. Obviously, the sandblasting took the most air, and it was bone dry the entire time, so the air dryer worked very, very well. To remove the saturated desk in, you just unscrew the cap here, and then since I already have some fresh beads ready, I'm going to go ahead and put that in, then bake the old ones until I'm ready to reuse them, and then I'll be all set. Make some more. Woo! Yay! One of the questions that has arisen is whether or not you could use other kinds of desiccant. And the answer is absolutely. The only thing about indicating desiccant beads is that it's easier to know when to switch them out. But if you don't use indicating, you can save money by not having to buy the clear section of the PVC. Another question that has come up is whether or not you can use different diameters or lengths of tubing. And the answer again is yes. I've had absolutely no hint of airflow restriction or any hint of water. So, I'm guessing you have wiggle room if you want to use smaller components. If you do change size, remember that you have two goals. The first, to optimize airflow. The second, to allow the air to be in contact with the desiccant for as long as possible. You should also keep in mind that the flow restriction due to the size of the inlet and outlet fittings is actually quite minimal. This is Poisson's equation for compressible fluids, and it is the most important factor here. You can ignore all the terms except for the radius and length of the pipe, since they are constants in this comparison. Then, you will see that your flow rate will be radius to the fourth power divided by the length of the section of pipe. So as the radius increases, flow rate increases very fast. And as the length of the pipe approaches zero, the flow rate also increases very fast. Now I'm going to address a little controversy. You kids out there in TV land have been saying a lot about the safety concerns about PVC pipe. And I have to say, I'm really touched that you guys care about my safety so much. Here's the problem. In this hobby, there's a lot of terrible ways to die! And I try to mention at least one per episode. It tends to be something that's not as well known, such as lead and automotive paints, as mentioned in episode 12. I try to stay away from the ones that are more common sense, such as getting crushed by a car, or fires when welding, or even silicosis when sandblasting and electrocution in electrolysis. You always want to use your common sense, so remember kids, safety first. After thinking about it, I'm concerned that the safety risks of PVC are not as well understood in TV land as they are here in Teddy land. So I'm going to tell you now, PVC is not ductile, which means if and when it fails, it will not bend, it'll shatter. And that means it will not leak, it'll explode. And getting shrapnel everywhere is a terrible way to die. There's a few ways you can mitigate this risk, and the first is to make sure that all your tubing is rated for a much higher PSI than what you're going to be using. In my case, my lowest rated piece is the Exelon R4000 Clear PVC, which is rated for 120 PSI. And my system runs after this regulator, which never goes higher than 90 PSI. Second is to make sure that your unit is out of the sunlight, because PVC is not UV resistant. You should also make sure to replace the unit after a few years because it will fatigue and weaken over time. Third, you could either build a tough shrapnel guard or have nobody near it when it's in use. If you do decide to use a shrapnel guard, you should make sure that you have an open side where the air can escape and you have to make sure it's pointing to either the floor or a wall so that nobody can get hit. In my case, as you may have already figured out, this workshop is in my basement where the air hose leads out ground level, goes around the porch, to the portable garage where I do all my work. Bernoulli, Schrodinger, and the studio audience are always outside with me, so literally nobody's around when the thing is in use. And I always make sure to depressurize the system when I am done. So that's it for today's update. See you next time, kids, on Hand is Bug. As always, this show is filmed in front of a live studio audience.
absolutely wagging with the paper.